Welcome! So if I learned anything from this channel is that I should have already made this video a long time ago because my 10 documentaries on Netflix that had to do with veganism is one of my most popular videos here. So let's get right into it. The number one documentary that you should watch is Minimalism. It's very simple. Just type it in and it's right there. So it's actually about uh, two men, their best friends, and basically they're going on a tour to spread the truth about like the minimalist lifestyle. And um, they actually have a YouTube channel and a podcast and they're like super branded. They have a book. They have like everything. So, um, so you can find them on here as well. They already start out this documentary being minimalist already. Um, so we don't have to see anybody like transition into the lifestyle. Uh, what, what I find so interesting is that <laughs> they're best friends, but they're so different. Like one of them is like the standard successful looking guy, like the way he dresses and the way, the way that he has his hair cut and stuff like that. Like he looks like fashionable and professional. And the other one is like, he kind of looks like a surfer dude, like really athletic or sporty or like adventurous like he wears barefoot sandals he skates everywhere he has like really long hair so i like how different they look from one another and it shows the spectrum of like who can be a part of the lifestyle right so um this is like the typical documentary it has um like testimonials it has people coming in talking about like consumer market behavior marketing um just like how the industry blew up how not being a minimalist is like affecting everyone on on like in every sense of the word like mentally and just being stressed out and being all these things so I really like it for just like a, a very basic entry-level minimalist documentary the second one is actually a series so um, it's kind of like a standard sort of reality TV show it's called tidying up and it's with like a very famous Japanese woman her name is Mary Kondo she created the Kamari method um, so she's really popular for that she had two books out before she got this um, series and basically her two books were um, spark joy which I didn't read and spark joy is she made it up it's like this feeling that you get like this jolt of good energy like when you pick up something that you love so much and you're like oh my god this water bottle makes me so happy so um, or like when you're living amongst all of your things in your room like all those things just elevate your energy because you like them so much um, she is very practical in the sense that like not everything that you keep should spark joy like you should have tools and be practical for things that you will need um, like don't get rid of every single thing like the keys to my house don't make me happy so I don't want them not in that way so she explains that um, so the documentary basically it has like a few episodes and we get to see collectors families like couples all living amongst each other and we get to just go in and watch her declutter and show people her method for decluttering and if you like stuff like that like the show borders then you'll like this type of show where, where we get to see like the before and after and just like how good they feel once their space has been like touched by Mary Kondo now this third one is actually a film yes I'm gonna throw a film in here because Netflix doesn't have a whole lot of like standard minimalist stuff so this film is actually The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, and we're following a 13-year-old boy. Um, this is based on a true story, which is so impressive. Um, we're in Malawi, and the film is in Chichewa and English, with English subtitles or whatever subtitles you need them to be in. And basically, the, the boy, his father is a farmer. Um, he has like a very big farm that he like kind of inherited from his father and he pays for this child to go to school but everyone in the land they start to sell their trees because they also have like farmlands they, they start to sell their trees to foreigners which really messes up the biology of the the land and um what it what it does is it starts to create droughts like crazy and they're not able to have crops anymore so now the father can't actually get any money in because he's not growing anything and now he can't send the boy to school but the boy like realizes by going to the dump because they have like this kind of like landfill he realizes that he could probably build something and that's a windmill so that he's able to make a system that could like take water all the way from down 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 below bring it up and make water happen without it having to rain and um and kind of like feed the whole community and he ends up doing that not going to school and i'm just like so impressed that this even happened so this film is minimalist in the way that number one the lifestyle is ultimate minimalism because there aren't a lot of material possessions here but the second thing is that if you love like the eyegasm and the and the the aesthetics of minimalism especially in film and photography like the wide shots that we get here the beautiful landscape of malawi like everything the blankness the one person in the shot the, the zooming out like really really far the 
the natural colors that are happening because there's like a lot of tans and a lot of like sunsets. This film is gorgeous. It's actually on like my top four list low key out of like this entire list. This is like top four for me. So this goes over water being life and how having nothing creates really brilliant thinking and solutions. If you didn't know, back in 2008, like a lot of really popular things that we're using now were created for the last recession, like Instagram and Venmo and Uber, like those things are the norm now. They're a part of our everyday life and those were created back in 2008 in the, last in, in the last recession. So it's like when people are without and your life changes and it's very different or you don't have a lot, you're able to think clearly and be innovative. And that's exactly what this film is going over. Like I'm just so impressed that that's this, that's this 13 year old. Do you know what I was doing at 13? Nothing. The next one is a series on how to live mortgage free. It, it's actually a series based in the UK about like alternative living and um, they go in and they help a few people do some do some things. So one of them is like brownfield sites, which if you haven't heard of it, I haven't either. It's basically this like this land that used to be industrial, like either they had animals on it, you know, for the animal agriculture industry, or they had like some really bad chemicals going on in this factory and you have to get the land tested. The government's selling it to like damn near nothing because it, it isn't actually residential land, but they're selling it to, to like anyone who would buy it and you're allowed to convert it to residential land. So that was like one solution because like the UK is so expensive. This goes over facts about their housing. Um, it goes over facts on the UK sprinkled throughout the living expenses. So some of the things that you're going to see here um, is like a flat pack church that somebody had and they converted it into a house. Someone is living on a boat here, somebody's living on a shipping container. People are converting the brownfield sites into residential land. Um, the, I think the thing that sucks about it is that we don't go into everything enough, like how to actually legally live alternatively. Like it's just not enough for like the common person to be able to do it. And I kind of wish that since this show had access to people that went through it, like I wish that like they shared it more. And I feel like that's a lot of the times what these what these types of shows are lacking, which you're going to see coming out because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention another one. This next one is like, this is a super interesting documentary. I'm going to tell you why. It's called Expedition Happiness. I'm not sure if you heard of it, but they, this is a couple, they had a dog and they ended up having a YouTube channel later and they ended up splitting up, which kind of sucks because I've, I've watched a lot of like couples build tiny houses together, couples live in like live in a van or in a car together and where like they travel the world together and then they come back and they break up and I'm like why is this happening like you have this great journey of growth where, where you like you you leave the same life behind you go somewhere you grow together you're growing through the situation and then you break up after like that's baffling to me I just can't understand it but basically th this is very interesting because they kind of film it like a YouTube video like it's like one documentary long YouTube video but we basically see this couple they they um, come to the US and they buy a schoolie, like a school bus, and they convert it, like self-build it out themselves. They go up to Canada and they want to travel all the way down from Canada to like, I don't know how far down they're going, like South America or further. But um, we get to see them go through all this drama with like border, like border control and this drama like with, with their dog, like getting sick and stuff. But also like the whole point of it is to find happiness. It's obvious that like they have minimal possessions because they left everything behind and are living in a really like a, a school bus, which is not a lot of livable space. But it's also mentally, um, it's like you don't have a lot of mental clutter. They're living a life without mental clutter and that also has to do with minimalism. So what they end up um, learning is that like being in the moment is happiness in and of itself, but it's still worth watching then get to that point. Remember when I said I low-key had a top four? Well, Heal, H-E-A-L, is a part of my top four. Oh my gosh, this is exactly what I want to be able to do to myself. This movie inspired me so much. Actually, it's a documentary. So basically, it's a traditional documentary, much like minimalism is. Um, in the way where they have like scientists coming in telling you facts they're using like little um, like kind of like cartoons to, to explain ideas um, but what this film is about is actually the mind-body connection and healing yourself and I'm like such a believer that that like that you're able to do that and I have like agoraphobia for like the past three years so I'm working on healing myself and it's taken me quite a while like what I think is a while but I'm getting so much better and that's why this movie like lit a fire in me like we get to see people in the film with cancer and what they're doing to try to like holistically heal um, we get to see people do like EFT which is tapping if you don't know what that is you should completely try it because 
it like lights up your face like you get all these tangles and you feel so different after you like do a session of EFT and it can be like a really short one like two minutes and I promise you it like changes and reorganizes the energy in your body. This movie is basically about the clearing of the mind from the mental clutter that we create, the modern stresses that we have and how you can get your body to heal itself and that's how it has to relate to minimalism. I mean, what more is it? Oh my gosh, this next documentary I did not like, but it does deserve to be on the list. So the next one is actually Tiny House Nation. And the reason why I hate it is that it's way too luxurious. It's way too wasteful. Um, basically, uh, people are making like these super epic tiny houses. Like, yes, they're so small, but they're doing slide outs. They're doing like all of these lofts. They're, ma they're like pushing the envelope with design. And it's like it's more for the architectural person or the person who likes design than it is for people that are actually trying to live smaller and more minimally. It does show you how to be more glamorous um, in a tiny house and how a tiny house can still have a lot of character and class. But it's just like it's too much for like a, like a true minimalist lifestyle. I just kind of I, I kind of hate it. This one is a documentary. It's called A Plastic Ocean. And we are following divers and biologists into the sea. They're sailing the sea so that they can show us the effects that plastic has had on the entire planet. We also get to go to other countries to see how they are dealing with their plastic waste or their waste in general. And we get to see how countries are affected by the pollution from other, like this isn't even waste that, that they created. This is like the ocean and the way that, that the ocean kind of circulates like this. It, it circulates all of the trash globally to certain countries in the world and I just think that that sucks so bad. So this film is actually minimalist in the sense that it's like once you've acquired anything in your life, like anything that I acquire at all, anything, it and I give it away or I throw it away, it never actually goes away because there is no way. Once an item is created, like that's it. Like if I throw this piece of paper outside, it could probably biodegrade because it's like tree pulp in water. So it could probably like you know, disintegrate again and go back into, or I can like compost it basically, and it'll, it'll, it'll actually go away. It'll become soil. But for the most part, every, almost like every material that exists, like it doesn't actually go away. So it sucks because when you look back on your life, you could just imagine how much stuff you've acquired, especially like as a baby, like if you wore pampers, and especially like as a person who menstruates, like if you think about all the pads and tampons you have worn, like it's, it's still there. It still exists. And that's just a sucky feeling to deal with. Um, so this is like low-key a zero waste documentary and it's something that supports that lifestyle which I think that zero waste and minimalism they're like they're married basically okay <laughs> this is one of my other super super favorites on my list it's called on yoga the architecture of peace <sighs> I've watched this three times already I'm gonna watch it a fourth time um, we're following a photographer who is very famous um, and he's had a super extensive long career basically what happens is one day his, his whole like right arm goes, I think it goes paralyzed or something happens to where he's not able to use it anymore. So he's not able to be a photographer anymore. But when he was a photographer, he used to uh, be in the moment with just one person. He never like played music or, or like did anything that took him out of the human human connection with him and the subject. He, he discovers yoga to heal himself and to just like fix everything within and he goes to travel to where yoga is happening like globally and he starts to uh, get mobility back in his arm actually and becomes a photographer again and he starts to photograph yogis being yogis like doing whatever they want if you want to get into like a really epic pose you can do that or if you want to just sit there and stare at me you can do that and it's minimalist in the way that it First of all, the, the mental clutter, again, like we can't forget that minimalism doesn't have to do with material possessions only. It is so much deeper than what I'm even saying in this video right now. And I'm seriously thinking about making a video on defining what minimalism is to me because it's just like so deep. I could almost write an essay on it. The same way that I said that the, the film, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind is, like this film is like that in the way that the landscapes and the fact that there's like one subject with a really far out shot we see like mountains like mountains that are snowy and we see like mountains that are in the sun we see like plains we see rocky areas and it's like the landscapes in this film are beautiful um but there's also that absence of sound a lot of the times which which can kind of drive me crazy like there, there there are chunks in this movie where nobody's talking or saying anything and there's like no noises 
being made um, and I feel like that's also minimalism just sitting in there and taking it easy it's kind of like doing yoga while watching the film basically so this last one is actually a series and it's season two I've never seen season one but it's called The Kindness Diaries I'm not sure if you've ever heard of it basically it's this guy his name is Leon he well let me say his name Leon because I want to say Leon because like that's how I would say it but L-E-O-N and he's traveling in a vintage like 1980s Volkswagen that has like the convertible like the little beetle that has the convertible um, and he's gonna go from Alaska to Canada to all of the US to Mexico, Costa Rica, Panama, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia and Argentina. He's like an ex-investor or something like that and what he's gonna do in here is to rely solely on kindness from strangers to see if they will give him shelter, give him food, and fill up his gas. The only thing that he's traveling with is his car, um, his clothes, and a sleeping bag. And he has like a big camera crew um, that we never see. So yeah. <laughs> In people being kind to him, one episode, well, well one person per episode actually receives a random act of kindness from him. My favorite gifts that he gave um, happened with like three people. Two of them, he gave them um, the ability to feed people for a year, which is great because like that's a basic need in and of itself. The, the other person, um, it was a guy, he was Haitian, he was in Bolivia. He was studying and he was saying like people were being like high key racist to him. Um, he thinks that, that like they were calling him a donkey in Spanish and but like with, with such like disdain like so nasty to him so it made him feel bad and what his goal in life was was to actually help um people in haiti so the guy gave the the, the dude was 26 years old and then the host of the show gave him the gift of helping people in haiti i won't say specifically what it was but it was actually really dope and so then there was like two parts of the whole thing that like that that brought me down as well because he met two people that i felt were so deserving of like an act of kindness from him like they were just such beautiful people and he didn't give them anything and i was like no but you'll see that if you watch it um but this uh is actually when he's traveling he's meeting a lot of foreigners that are traveling to the same places that he is and these people are traveling by motorbike a lot of them are doing van life a lot of them are driving in cars or a lot of them are just taking buses and going place to place and i love how different all these people look how they're coming from all places all over the world and they're just traveling which is epic because that's like the ultimate minimalist thing you're an essentialist you're traveling with just what you need and you're just going place to place like living this nomadic lifestyle and being in the moment and that's like my biggest dream ever so this is up there with with my top four of out of all these that I recommended they're just like my favorite and it's exactly what I need to hear right now it's minimalist in the sense that come on this dude is traveling with nothing basically and he's meeting other people like if we're gonna question the fact that he has a camera crew and stuff in a show and we're gonna like not give him a lot of clout for for doing that then at least all the other foreigners that he's meeting they're also traveling with nothing they're actually traveling with nothing so that's epic but it's also minimalist in the way that you know when you travel you don't have the mental clutter of it all and you're able to really find true happiness you're able to be kind you're able to be open and like who's pissed off while traveling really when does it happen I, especially when you're traveling in this way like people didn't have gas and they, and they were just like they had to sign up like please give me gas money like look at that freedom they, they just have all this hope that everything's going to be okay all the time which is you know why van life is very difficult for me because with the agoraphobia it's just like it's really hard to to talk against my mind and to be like yeah no totally don't freak out right now even though a through z just happened you know like <laughs> that, that power and that control is so beautiful anyways i hope that you enjoyed my top 10 um if you don't live in the u.s please share your minimalist documentaries down below because Netflix is not the same globally, um, which I learned in the vegan uh, documentary video that I made. Like people are like, I can't find that. They don't have that here. So um, list down below where you're from and the documentaries that you like so that if other people click on this video, then you're kind of helping them out as well. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.